Mark Phillips infuriates me. He and his wife call themselves digital nomads, <laughs> running six-figure businesses as they travel the world. He did this interview from his office, which involved sitting on the beach overlooking the Great Barrier Reef. Oh boy, hasn't the world changed? Hey, before we get carried away with episode 364 of the Small Business Big Marketing Show, the marketing gold that's about to rain down on us all is made possible thanks to Fastmail, private, secure, ad-free email hosting that's lightning fast. Packages start from less than four bucks a month and you can grab a free 30-day trial plus get 15% off your first year over at fastmail.com forward slash Timbo. And we're also made possible thanks to 52ways.biz, that's 52ways.biz, which is a free one-day live event hosted by small business luminary, Dale Beaumont, for business owners who want to simply grow. Grab your free tickets over at 52ways.biz before it's too late. Yeah, I say, welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed, you infinitely more importantly, you're a motivated business owner, you're ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. If it's your first time round, welcome. If you've been listening to the show for years, love your work. Big show today, Mark Phillips from Business in Bare Feet joins us to take us behind the scenes of this annoying new group of serious business owners called Digital Nomads. Resident expert Dale Beaumont shares a fantastic productivity tool with us. I share another low-cost marketing idea that's going to change your business world. And we go back into the vault revisiting a recent episode I had with one of my most inspiring guests yet. Can you guess who it was? As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. <sighs> Life just got a whole lot easier. Hi, it's Dale Beaumont here from 52ways.biz, the best one-day business workshop ever, with another productivity tip to make your business life a whole lot easier. So what is the tool that I've got to share with you today? Well, it's called Google Sites, and it's a product that is amazing, but hardly anyone has heard of it before. Now, of course, everyone knows Google, and most people know Gmail and things like Google Docs and Google Calendar, but Google Sites is another product from Google that helps you to create a website. Now, it's not a great product for creating a company website, but it is a great product for creating an internal website. That is a website that is just for the people that work for you in your business. And what you can do is you can turn Google Sites into your own company intranet. And it's one central place that stores all of the intellectual property from your business. All of your checklists, procedures, uh, training videos, any resources, any a checklist that you have, all of your knowledge goes in one central place. And because you use Google's advanced search feature, all people have to do is search and they can find exactly what they're looking for instantly. So that's the tool. It's called Google Sites. And I can tell you more at one of my live events. There you go. I told you life would get a whole lot easier. This has been Dale Beaumont from 52ways.biz. Now, back to you, Timbo. Oh, life just got a whole lot easier. Hey, thanks, Dale. It's amazing how many free tools Google have. I haven't used Google Sites. I hear it's very good. However, I just moved all my podcasting systems across to Google Drive, and I've got to tell you, life just got a whole lot easier. Now, I've had quite a few listeners ask, what is Dale going to share at these upcoming live events? Well, without giving away too much, I can tell you that he'll share 10 ways to generate more leads fast and easily. He'll talk about how to generate $30,000 of free media exposure 
and he's got a simple hack to finding anyone's email address anytime, plus another 40 or so ideas on top of that all in one day. It's happening around Australia between May and August. He also goes to New Zealand, and you can grab a free ticket for you and some mates over at 52ways.biz. That's 52ways.biz. <laughs> Coming up after today's interview, I share another low-cost marketing idea that you can implement immediately. But right now, let's meet today's successful business owner, Mark Phillips from Business in Bare Feet. Now, I met Mark at a recent Microsoft function. Him and I are both part of Microsoft's Small Business Ambassador Program, which is quite interesting in itself, given my love of Apple products. That said, I'm a man of the people. And I'm well aware I need to better understand both the light and the dark side. You choose which is which. I digress. Now, Mark is a digital nomad. He and his wife, Linda, run two serious six-figure businesses, yet have no fixed address. They live in a tent, sleep in swags, and stay nowhere longer than a week or so. Some of you, I'm sure, would say they're living the La Vida Loca, Others of you probably couldn't think of anything worse. You decide after this interview. Listen in as we discuss why they did it, what it's like to run a serious business literally from a beach or the side of the road, depending on where you can get internet connection, how they work hard at building trust with their clients, how much the world has changed in order for such a nomadic lifestyle to be successful, and so much more. So, I thought I'd start off by explaining my morning commute to Mark. I have schlepped my way into the studio this morning on a crowded train that took forever. There were signal problems. There were grouchy people. It was chockers. I'm finally here. I'm in an okay mood. How are you and where are you? Uh, uh, Tim, I'm on top of the world. Um since we last caught up in Sydney, I think it was, uh, I've found my way to lovely Queensland. Right. Uh, the Great Barrier Reef. Um, I'm actually cute. looking at Great Keppel Island from the beach right now. Yeah. You okay, mate? Oh, it's a tough life, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> now, I have to work very hard, and so do you, at making sure listeners don't hate you by the end of this interview. So, buddy, <laughs> in order to get a sense of what this nomadic lifestyle thing is. Let's get the... What is the terminology, by the way? Okay. It goes under different uh, terms. There's there's no real strong thing. Uh, remote worker, digital nomad. Um, I just get called hobos and homeless sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. Okay, so lots of different language. What, what do you and your wife... What's the business that you and your wife do? Okay. So we we have a range of businesses. Um, and I guess that's that's part of the modern world. Is you're never quite sure where where business is coming from. So you probably need to hedge your bets a little bit. Mm-hmm. But uh, most of our work is that we travel around and help start up businesses and small enterprises get themselves ready for this digital age that this sort of just seems like it just sort of arrived yesterday mm-hmm. and um, and expand off overseas particularly to scale the business into much bigger, more sophisticated, more hungry markets than what you often find in your local region here in Australia. Okay. So so the point of that question, A, is to understand what you guys do, but also to establish that you and your... What's your wife's name? Linda. Linda. You and Linda aren't a couple of backpackers travelling around the world grabbing work wherever you can. You you are running serious businesses. Yes. Right. That's right. Okay. And and unlike the the normal backpacker market, you know, I'm pushing 53, um, and we've been living on the road for nearly two years now, mm-hmm. uh, and and we have travelled a lot of parts of the countryside and and, and the world. But um, this is a choice for us. Um, it's a it's a choice to enjoy our life while helping more people um, and becoming more enthused than what we were when we were. Um, a bit more uh, um, set in our ways and living in houses and so forth. I, I, I want to find out how and why you did it, but in order to, for me to do that, tell me, describe your lifestyle. Describe what a day in the life of a digital nomad looks like. 
Okay, so all of us digital nomads take on different forms. Um, I guess because I'm a, a business mentor um, that uh, is doing all sorts of things with clients, I'm often on the phone or Skype uh, talking with clients uh, somewhere in the world, and we, we have operations all around the world. Um, you know, we wake up and actually we live in a tent. Um, highly sophisticated. We've got a tent, we've got a swag, we've got a uh, four-wheel drive with us. We also ride a motorbike to travel so that one can go one way, one can go another. Uh, if we've got different business commitments, uh, it's not unusual for... Are we, are we having a blue? Uh, <laughs> 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 if we're having a blue, but usually that doesn't happen. Right. So, you know, you've got to jump on a plane sometimes and go somewhere and see people. And I, I, I was being facetious, but are you infinitely happier? Much happier. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll come back to that. There's so much to talk mm-hmm. about. But I do want to paint the picture. So you, you are literally living in a tent. you got yep. a swag. Can I ask, is it a yep. double swag or are you sleeping in separate beds? Yeah, you know? yeah no, we're, we're sleeping together. Oh, um, well, right. That's enough. Very okay. comfortable. Yeah, okay. we're, we've you know, got the ability to touch each other all night. And enough. Comfortable. It's a and business <laughs> show. It's a business show. <laughs> okay, so uh, tent... Um, four-wheel drive, you are pulling up then in caravan parks or or not by the side of the road or wherever you choose to pitch? It, it does vary, yes. Okay. Um, where, how long do you stay in one location for? We have been here for... This will be one of the longest for a while. This will be about a week. Sometimes we're just doing a couple of days. Um so we've got some business commitments around here in, in Yapoon, uh, in um, central Queensland, and then we're heading up to Mackay, uh, where uh, there's a big mining conference next week, uh, Mining and Innovation, mm-hmm. followed by Startup Weekend Youth. Uh, then we'll be back here in Rockhampton doing wow. a startup um, program for Rockhampton Shire and uh, what's called a three-day startup weekend, which is run through the university, and it goes on from there. And all this time... I keep coming back to the point that you are running a serious business with long-term clients. You don't have to tell us how much you're turning over. I'd love you to, but it's... Well, will will you? I've got to tell you, it varies up and down. Okay. So Uh, welcome welcome to small business. Yes. (laughs) Have a nice day. You know, I'm I'm probably on the edge of about two, three deals worth a quarter million dollars. Yep. Um, last month, I think I invoiced as little as five thousand dollars. Come on, step it up. Ten thousand. So, okay. So it, again, it just varies, Tim. Yeah. 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 Well. Well. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for sharing that because it's it's sort of a rude question, but I I'm mm. really keen, well don't agree with that. I'm really keen to scope just the, the nature of what you're doing. You've got. Oh. Z- Go on. Yeah. No. Okay. okay. So. We work with a range of clients, usually no more than about 15 intensely at any point in time. Yep. Uh, right now, we're doing two capital raises for two startups that are expanding out into some international activities. So we're, we're doing yeah, a couple of million dollars worth of funding each. So, so we're preparing the documentation, we're refining the business model, their story, we're making it look good, and we're taking it to investors. Because one of the nice things about travelling the world is you meet lots of people. And, and this lifestyle and this more adventurous activities, you tend to gravitate to other people. And these are the more active, moving, often richer people that are interested in backing, you know, innovative uh, companies. So, mm-hmm. so we connect with those guys and we take them um, interesting businesses that are going places. And then it sort of goes on from there. So we've got a, we've got a great client on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, so apart from the fact that we're negotiating the big sale of their business off to some Chinese investors right now, I found through my, my African business networks that um, there's a couple of countries over there that wanted some tourism activities that line up with these clients. So you know, we set up a call with the tourism minister in a West African country and pitched him a half a million dollar uh, tourism event that was going to bring in some worldwide notoriety. And, you know, so we sat there on, I don't know what we ended up using, Skype or WhatsApp or something like that, and had this conversation about when and how and logistics and where we'd focus. And so, you know, we're, we're using the network to bring good things to lots of people. Mark, do you make it clear or do you hide the fact that you are doing business with people uh, probably with no shoes on, in your board shorts, <laughs> overlooking the Great Barrier Reef. I, I got to tell you, Tim, 
there's a funny story how this came about. Um, I do not hide it. Um, it's almost like a badge of honour. Um, so, the, you know, as you may know, I'm actually corporately trained. Um, out of university, I'm a chartered accountant in my training. I've worked for some very big technology companies like Microsoft and Apple. Uh, I've done hundreds of millions of dollars worth of deals and projects around the world. And you know, that afforded me the luxury of being able to pick and choose what I wanted to do a bit more. So I had this sort of uh, social profile in one of those second-tier social things a few years ago. It was just about travelling the world and, and seeing lots of the, the, the countryside. And, you know, I've, been, I've now been over to over 100 countries. And it was just a bit of a tongue-in-cheek profile. didn't matter, but this profile of mine was... Can getting... I just ask that profile? Do you mean like on a LinkedIn or a Facebook? Yeah, this one was called About Me. Yep, uh, gotcha. We... Was it? Yep, About Me. Uh, good little company, part of um, Yahoo, and then it's been privatised. Anyway, it was one of those things, but we were very popular. Uh, I say we, you know, you're always talking about the, the network of people you've got there, but um, it was going off. I thought, oh, what the hell? You know, I've got to lose, you know. I'm just going to take that and put it on LinkedIn. Well, I generated $50,000 worth of fees in the first four weeks <laughs> just by using a... What, what's since been termed a more real and genuine sort of profile. Can I just uh, understand that? Can, uh, mm. Just to understand that. So we've talked about about me on this show only in the last month or so. Um, oh, it's, wow. it's, it's Yeah, it's a simple way to get a, a website, a personal brand website up and running in five minutes. You can put your bio, your photos, links to other social media channels, links to your blog, podcast, whatever. Very simple. What do you mean? How did you know that your about me page took off? Well, we were getting lots of visitors and lots of comments and likes. It was aspirational. Hmm. Uh, there was a lot of people that wanted the dream of travelling the world and being able to set up businesses and work for themselves. And that's coincided with this massive social change that's happening around since the global financial crisis, where there aren't as many jobs at in established businesses. And the big end of town has stopped hiring. And there's much, all the growth is coming from SMEs. And there's people realising, OK, well, I'm actually going to have to start a business if I'm going to earn a decent income. Hallelujah. And, yep. And uh, there's all sorts of economic and social reasons why that is happening. Anyway, so there's a lot of people looking and trying to learn about how am I going to have a nice lifestyle without taking the boring corporate stuff. And I, and I love my corporate life, so I, yep. I won't hit them too hard, the poor dears. I'll go hard. And tires and offices. <laughs> <laughs> cubicle escapees, cubicle refugees. We've got all, all sorts yeah. of names for, for them. Yeah, but, but it's fantastic training ground. And, Correct. And I was lucky enough to grow through that era. Um, and, you know, corporates are struggling in their own rights and they're trying to get a bit more of this. But... But there's much more activity and intensity in small business, and small business collaborates much easier with, with other people. Uh, they come together, they work together when you've got specialist expertise, and bingo, things just happen. I'm going to go back to that question, because I'm not sure whether you shirked it or whether you just got sidetracked, but do you hide from the fact that when you are doing a deal over Skype with the African government or whoever else, that you are in your board shorts overlooking. No. The, you no, don't. I, I, I do not hide that. It is it is quite public and it is confronting for some people that can't handle this. Um, and to build up trust in relationships, you need to leverage some other um, activities. You know, you obviously need to, you know, I've already mentioned I'm a chartered accountant. I've worked for major companies. Uh, I've travelled extensively. I'm a professional mentor and have been for in some sort of uh, form for about 15 years now. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, people still need to build a level of trust with you. And it's just not the normal way, particularly for the older folk, not the normal way that uh, they have traditionally been exposed to building trust. And, and that is part of the challenge today in this digital world. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you, have you, do you know that you've lost business? Absolutely. Right. Yes, I have. Yeah. Uh, um, someone said something to you. Uh, it's about those Quicksilver shorts, uh, Mark. Uh, you might have to up it, mate. No, Australia's quite regressed and, and traditional in the way we do business. And a number of clients are not comfortable dealing across something even as high quality as Skype or WhatsApp or Signal, whatever. Isn't that bizarre? They want to sit down with you face to face. Oh, they want a meeting. They want a one-hour meeting. Yeah, yeah. And and, um, and, and, and and what do you say to that? 
Well, I don't operate there. Yeah. So if, if, if they can't come at dealing with somebody on a, on a Skype call or a phone call, mm. how are they going to expand to the rest of the world? Yeah. They're, they're not the sort of person that I think is actually going to uh, easily make it on a global scale. Mm-hmm. Hey, so listeners, I am talking to Mark Phillips. His business is called Business in Bare Feet which I absolutely love, and uh, he's a digital nomad right now speaking to us on the beach overlooking Dunk Island. Uh, quite annoying, quite frustrating. Wanting to hang up right now on him, but I'm going to persevere. <laughs> so, Mark, um, again, I want to get to why you and Linda took off and decided to do this two years ago, but let's just finish the conversation around what the business looks like and how it operates. What technology does one need to be a nomad? Okay, you obviously need a phone and a couple of backups. You need uh, Wi-Fi or mobile access to be able to access internet. You need a nice, robust, lightweight uh, computer or tablet to be able to do something. Um, you know, we, we've been uh, using a couple of these Microsoft Surface Pros for a few years now, um, which is our preferred uh, model of choice. And, um, Mate, I, I, I've got to say, I've seen, I've done a bit of a Google image search on you, and seen a couple of those beautiful cliched shots of you sitting there with a with a Surface Pro. I think one was on a sand dune, one was on a beach. Love it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> absolutely. And um, uh, so off off we go. Uh, and you know, you need a full screen computer to be able to do things. You know, this morning I'm sitting down there working out financial business models and plans for for a client. I needed, you know, the display 15 columns in a spreadsheet that I couldn't do on a phone and things mm-hmm. like that. And then we pop into co-working spaces and we drop in and stay with friends and they have further activities and, um, you know, I guess you just have to be agile and mobile and be self-sufficient. Um, I, I imagine you, the, the greatest problem would be uh, internet access. Internet access is a major problem in this country, mm. yes. Mm. Um, you know, for whatever reason, we've missed the boat and um, nobody seems to care, uh, which is why so many startups and, and Australian business people leave the country and go off overseas, I'm sure. Incredible, isn't it? Incredible. I actually don't really, I'm going to digress here, but I don't really understand why we're rolling out a national um, broadband network that it requires cables. Um, isn't the sky a better place to kind of interact with the internet via you, satellite? You, you would have thought so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the cost of satellite is actually low from a wholesale point of view. You know, we've got clients that, you know, a client on the Sunshine Coast, for instance, that runs all of the Botswana and internet service and satellite <laughs> services from his office at the University of the Sunshine Coast. No. Absolutely. And we can't do that in this country. Just to be clear, and you heard it first on the Small Business Big Marketing Show, the Botswana internet is run out of uh, Noosa. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> it is. Yes. <laughs> oh, what a funny, funny world we live in. But again, um, we can laugh at that, but the world has changed. It's flat, right? It's it like, changed. yeah, and I just don't know whether enough. I think people listening to this show get it because they've actually, they're listening to a podcast, a modern form of media. But, yeah. you know, as you, and, and you're traveling a lot of regional Australia. So are you we just are, noti- yeah. noticing that there is still, oh, gee, I'm, I'm going to use the word backwardness about how they approach business? There's a, there's a level of conservatism, but I guess the people that turn up to talk to us and go to the sort of events that we go to are not the conservative ones. They are curious. They don't understand. They're looking for a better way. They don't necessarily mm. know the steps to get from A to B yeah. in this modern world, but, but it's not a backwardness. It's more of a immaturity and knowledge. Yeah. And to some extent, you know, this is a pretty easy country to, to live in and exist in, and we haven't had to force ourselves to get onto this stuff like so many other parts of the world have, uh, which is why we're, we are behind in our application of many uh, digital technologies and yeah, right. business uh, techniques. I, yeah. I, I, I must say, I speak at a lot of conferences each year, most of which are in capital cities, but when I do get the opportunity to speak in regional Australia, I love it because they are so receptive and so hungry for, for new thinking, for new ideas. It, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. The, the percentages are probably even higher in the bush and you know, certainly in the agricultural space, you know, a lot of farmers are self-employed small business. Yeah, absolutely. And they're always absolutely. looking for technique. Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, Mark, let's talk about what you ran away from. I mean, sorry, why you... Um, <laughs> why... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'm going to ask. I mean, two years ago, you and Linda uh, left a life. I think you were li- actually living on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, we were, we were overlooking Noosa. We were on the edge of an escarpment with about a 50-kilometre view, floor-to-ceiling glass windows. Uh, surrounded by kangaroos and magnificent bird life. But you know what? We had no television. We had no internet. And, you know, I had to walk outside and stand on top of the tank to get a phone call. But it sounds idyllic. I would move there tomorrow. I, I, it's seriously, <laughs> seriously, why? Why? What What made you head off to take have no fixed address, to live in a tent? Come on, what were you running away from? Well, I guess we're, we were trying to find... Uh, a bit more activity. The Sunshine Coast is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's one of Australia's hottest start-up scenes, but it is still... Um, it's still small business, it's still regional Australia, and it's, you know, the economy is flat in this country. OK, so why not move to Sydney? Why did you take off and travel around the world? Oh, my goodness. I don't think I can handle a city like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, Adelaide. <laughs> I grew up in that late night. Okay. <laughs> so what what actually happened was that Linda said, uh, listen, I really want to travel around Australia and go and help this uh, massive depression and and lack of confidence that's out there in the bush we've been hearing about. So she said, I'm going to ride the motorbike around Australia and we're going to visit people and we're going to work on their mindsets and, and enthuse them, encourage them and show them there are different ways. Wow. So we purposely started on that trip to do a, a lap of Australia um, I had a whole range of clients that I was dealing with anyway, and, and that continued to grow. We started to do more and more startup weekends and more and more startup events. We then created a business incubator uh, up in Mackay, up in uh, central Queensland, central north Queensland, um, and things are escalating. I hang on, hold with... on, hang on. I'm still, <laughs> in, I'm still back here on the Sunshine Coast. So, okay, it sounds to me, reading between the lines, you and your wonderful wife, Linda, share a similar mindset. Um, we do. Talking to you previously, you talked about an adventure gene that you you both have. Yes. The uh-huh. conversation was, okay, we live in a nice place, but we want to go out and help the rest of the world. We're not tied to anything. No kids. Got a dog. Correct. No kids. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, let's just do things differently, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. So but we have always travelled. So travelling has been part of our life. Uh, whether it's a psychographic aspect, if you go back to your uh, Carl Jung sort of um, um, you know, brand archetypes and so forth, or whether it is genetic, like uh, we've recently found in these adventure genes, for us, we get our most enjoyment while we are adventuring and travelling and learning and meeting people. And you have much greater amount of ability to do that when you are changing places every week or so. Is your work output for your clients, what you deliver to your clients, is it better now? The quality is better. Can we a bit slower through those technology challenges? But the quality is better. Absolutely. How how do you know that? um, I'm more, more happy with what I'm delivering. I'm discovering... My own creativity is bringing forward opportunities that I wasn't seeing a few years ago, and my clients haven't seen them. So, you know, a classic example, uh, we're dealing with another digital nomad company. Um, the founders have been travelling four years around Australia in a bus with their kids, so they're homeschooling. Uh, they've got this wonderful app that helps uh, digital nomads and campers and caravans. What's it called? And it's called for, uh, Free Range Camping. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, Keep going. And, you know, they've, they've picked up 100,000 uh, followers in the last two years. And so we're looking at expanding them with some outside capital. And, you know, that worked out what their market size was, I thought. And I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and I looked carefully at the technology. And again, coming from the technology background, I could sort of see things that the average business coach consultant might not Mm -hmm. and i said guys you're missing the point that you can deliver advertising to bush remote advertisers better than facebook better than google because those companies need online access you work offline you've actually missed a 150 million dollar opportunity and you've built everything ready for it and they looked at it they looked at they turned upside down they looked at me strangely and i said i thought about it and i said Oh, shit. That's great. <laughs> oh. And, you know, so, so suddenly what we have the, now the ability through this app, through the Free Range Camping Network, that we can go into a little town out in 
you know, whoop, whoop. out in the bush. And so, listen, I know there's only 2,000 people in your town, but we know there's 100,000 travellers that are going to come through. We know that you make your money on the travellers. How would you like to put some advertising in front of the travellers coming to you over the next week? Because we know which way they're travelling and how many are coming and when they're going to arrive. So the quality of your thinking has clearly improved. How do you... Self-discipline, Mark. I mean, mm-hmm. Mate, if I were you... I would be, I'd be struggling to maintain focus uh, right now. Again, <laughs> sitting on the beach uh, yep. overlooking the Great Barrier Reef, uh, yep. I'd be right now going. I wish Tim had wrapped this interview so we can head out and do a bit of snorkeling. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've, I've got to put some uh, some nicer clothes on, Tim. I've got to go down and brief council shortly. Oh, do you? <laughs> Mate, you'll have, you might have to put a t-shirt on. T- swap it. Swap the oh. singlet for a t-shirt. <laughs> Goodness me. Tell me what... You, have you got the camera going here? <laughs> Actually, what I will get you to do is send me a photo once we've finished of exactly uh, where you are during this interview, and I'll put it sure in the show do. notes. Tell me, um, what what is abs- what's the most amazing thing about your nomadic lifestyle, and what is the most difficult thing? The, the, the most amazing thing is that we meet absolutely stunning people. Mm-hmm. Just motivated, um, skilled, um, fascinating, uh, had a beautiful life. We meet them almost by accident. There's this laissez-faire nature of running into kindred souls mm-hmm. where we can help them, they can help us, and it lifts everybody to a higher level. So that, uh, um, if I could put a marketing, if I could wrap a marketing term around that, your your networking has been supercharged since... Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me give you another example that happened just recently. Um, a mate of mine in Spain calls me up and says, Mark, I've just taken over the global distribution for a HIV self-testing kit. Okay, fantastic. I said, I'm trying to roll it out through Africa. Who do you know in Africa? I said, I know everyone in Africa. No, I said, no, I don't. <laughs> I said, um, all right, what are you trying to do? I said, well, so we had a bit of a chat. I said, oh, okay. So I caught up a couple of mates and I said, would this thing be interesting in your country? Um, I don't know what level of HIV problem you have, but, but and um, so one of my colleagues, again in West Africa, says, oh, HIV is not that big here. We've probably only got a million people with the disease, but you know, it could be a market. <laughs> and I looked at Australia, and so I think Australia's stats are something like 20,000, 25,000. Yeah, right. And this, this country is the same population of ours. And so to me, a million is huge. Mm-hmm. So, you know what, we, we lined up a distribution arrangement for the Spanish company to deal with a Nigerian company in Niger in, uh, on the Niger River, the mm-hmm. Niger River. Uh, we went and approached the World Bank for some um, introductions and we lined up the Red Cross to do some funding out of Switzerland. And guess what? We are now bringing these series of kits to one of the poorest countries in the world ahead of many other Western countries. And all that happened because your network has expanded due to yes. your lifestyle. Yeah, love it. What's yes. the most difficult thing about it, Mark? Um, I, I guess the, the internet and time are the biggest things. Um, what, you got too much time? <laughs> No, we're, we're actually business is going through the roof. So right. <laughs> I just don't have enough time. Right. Scaling, scaling is a perpetual problem with with small businesses. You know, we need to find a way of which we can work with other people just in time, and so that they can um, deliver us collectively some sort of gain. But, but, but surely you, uh, well, maybe not surely, but do you want to build an empire? Isn't that counterintuitive to what you are doing as digital nomads? It's it's all about lifestyle. I mean, do you want to grow it, exponentially? Well, life is about lifestyle. Um, and business is part of life. <laughs> you know, you were talking about you know, struggling to maintain focus. And you hear this a lot from people coming out of the corporate game. All I want to do is sleep. All I want to do is rest. <laughs> okay, and, and, and that's because that's they are run down and tired and need their mojo mm-hmm. again. And that comes, you'll get past that within about two months, uh, in my experience. And after that, you're sitting there with itchy feet saying, what am I going to do next? I can choose. What do I prefer to do? And and so just travelling for travelling's sake can be rather superficial. But when you've got 
something deeper to get involved with the local community on where you can help them and guide them or introduce them or, or they can teach you, suddenly your engagement with people gets much, much deeper. And that is so satisfying. Mm. Yeah, OK. Work disappears. Work disappears. It, it is life for us. We don't talk about work, work-life balance. We have one life, and it involves work and massive amounts of volunteering. You know, yeah, sometimes okay. we get paid for stuff, sometimes we don't. It doesn't yeah. really matter because it's very, very enjoyable. How fantastic. There is a lot of people listening to this show, Mark. There are vets and there are plumbers and there are, you know, everything in between. Um, mm-hmm. Who is this lifestyle best suited to? Obviously people that are a bit itchy. Um, they, they feel there's something missing. That's, it, that's, that's have... everyone. So <laughs> do we narrow that down? Um, you know, if it's not happening in your environment, go find a new environment. You know, right. Jump out of one puddle, go to find another puddle. Um, you know, uh, travelling, you know you whether you're a traveller or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if, if you get enjoyment from travel, you'll know that. Mm-hmm. And, and you want to do more of it. Um, I guess the the comfort levels are actually really quite good. Um, there's a lot more just-in-time sort of stuff. Um, so you probably need... Uh, you know, people that are more agile tend to be happy with this sort of thing. But agility can be learned and mm-hmm. can be developed over time. You know, we'll, we'll get up in the morning sort of saying, oh, where should we go? Which way should we go? Yeah, right. Money, money, money. All right, mate, I'm, I'm getting a bit annoyed stop. now. I'm getting a bit annoyed. I'll wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of the train ride home. Hey, hey, Mark, uh, it's a great story, buddy. Uh, you're two years in. Um, is, is, it, is it a rest of life thing or is there an end point? I, I guess we could probably, if can't push came to shove, we could probably settle in as few as four places a year. Right, okay. Um, we could do three months at a time at a push. Um, but no, we couldn't have a single place anymore. You know, wow. We've sold all of our properties. We've moved on. Um, you know, property's another issue, but uh, no. I can't, what what can't do you mean, property's another issue? Well, you know, for some reason they keep going up through the roof in this yeah. country and yeah. people can't afford it, but it's out of sync with the rest of the world and, yes. and everything. And so we from an investment point of view, said property isn't necessarily where you're going to make money. Mm -hmm. And historically, Australians have made money on property and mining, uh, Mm. not much else. So we said, no, we actually see a crash coming. So we said, let's get out while we're going good. Yeah. Actually, we've done that. We're renting and um, and just kind of waiting for things to sort of sort themselves out. Um, I might join you, mate. I'll be there and give me me a day. Just got to let my wife know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey, buddy, um, love your work. Um, you. I was going to ask you how can people find you, but maybe that's the point. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> Business in bare feet. Uh, MarkPhillips.biz, uh, Mud Maps is my travel company. We've, they're all different brands related to the same sort of space. But right. Business in bare feet is probably the easiest. Good on you, buddy. Uh, enjoy the snorkelling. <laughs> if you insist, Tim. Thanks very much. Oh, boy. There you go. Mark Phillips, business in bare feet. (laughs) What a mongrel. (laughs) What a life. I don't know. Would you do it? I'm in two minds. Sounds good on paper. It was kind of uh, inspiring listening to him. Don't know whether I could live in a tent uh, forever, though. Hey, you can check out his website, businessinbarefeet.com to find out more, or hit him up on Facebook. His Facebook um, ID is the letter I and then his name, Mark Phillips, with two L's. Coming up, I share my top three attention grabbers from that fireside chat with Mark, plus I've got another low-cost marketing idea for you that I think you're going to love. But first, have you heard of Fast Mail? This show is lovingly supported by Fastmail, an insanely secure, ad-free email hosting service for that beautiful business of yours. I asked Fastmail's operations engineer, aka lead geek, Rob Norris, to wrap some numbers around Fastmail. (laughs) And didn't he get excited? 
All right. Well, we have about 150,000 users around the world. We deal with about 30 to 40 million emails every day. I think about 30 million of them is spam that we reject. So there's about four or five million legitimate emails a day that come through the system. We have 500 terabytes of just backup storage. So this is not the day-to-day mail that people use, but just all of their mail last ditch, you know, the world is on fire. We've got a copy of everything. So that's a ton of that. And we operate at that scale, but we the company is probably only around 20 people. We run small, but we pack a punch. <laughs> Fast mail, taking the fear out of Armageddon. Packages start from less than $4 a month. Grab a free 30-day trial plus 15% off your first year over at fastmail.com forward slash Timbo. Alrighty, my top three attention grabbers from my chat with digital nomad Mark Phillips. Thanks to 52ways.biz and Fast Mail. Attention grabber number one. If your environment isn't working for you, then find a new environment. Interesting quote from Mark. Now, that doesn't mean you have to hit the road like Mark and his wife have, but at least think about where else you can do business. For me, I have certain places that I go to when I need to be more creative and other places where I go if I just need to get shit done, you know? My environment has a huge impact on how I think and feel, so maybe you're the same way. If that's the case, you might want to, you know, shake things up, move things around a bit. Attention grabber number two. More businesses need to embrace new ways of communicating with their clients. I couldn't agree with this more. If you're not at the very least familiar with software like communication software like WhatsApp, Voxer, Skype, to name a few, then you're well behind the eight ball. It doesn't mean you have to use them all, but at least make an informed decision not to use them. And attention grabber number three Always be on the lookout for ways to build trust with those precious, precious clients of yours. Mark and his wife have to work particularly hard at this given they've got no fixed address, but as a business owner, it's good practice for you to constantly ask yourself, what can you be doing to build more trust? Great question to ask, I'd suggest on a daily, definitely weekly basis. Hey, what grabbed your attention? Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 364 and let me know. What, what, what. what have you got to lose? Righto, it's time for one simple yet effective marketing idea that you can implement immediately. One that's not going to cost you a fortune and that might just generate you more awareness, more inquiry, and ultimately more sales. I cleverly call today's idea the Get an Infographic Now strategy. An infographic is simply a visual representation of an idea, and they're particularly powerful pieces of content for three reasons. They're visual, they're embeddable, and they're very, very shareable. So here's my three steps on how to create an infographic now. Step one, decide on the idea you'd like to bring to life visually. It may come from your most popular blog post or video or podcast episode, You're doing a podcast, right? Maybe you simply have an idea worth sharing that you'd love the world to know about. Just be mindful that your infographic should tell a story and include supporting stats and research. Step two, create your infographic using a tool like Pictochart or Infogram, or you could hire a freelance designer who, depending on their level of experience, may be even cheaper than those tools I mentioned. Step three, once complete, Promote the hell out of your infographic. As I said, infographics are highly shareable. Post it on all your social media channels, boost it on Facebook, email it to your clients and other influencers, including relevant journalists that are both online and offline. Maybe even link it to your email signature. And here's the pro tip. Don't shirk on the design. Shirk a word? I think it is. Great looking infographics that introduce solid ideas are amazing. So go that extra mile to ensure yours looks visually incredible. You're going to find a couple of great examples over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash infographics, including one on how to beat jet lag that was cleverly created by a travel agent and another fun one titled Ron Burgundy's Guide to Dressing for Success, which was produced by the film Anchorman's production company. Genius. Well, that's my three steps on how to create an infographic that rocks. And if you'd like help implementing any of the marketing ideas I share on this segment, 
and there's been 28 so far, go ahead and join the Small Business Big Marketing Club over at crankmymarketing.com where I'll personally support you daily on your marketing journey. So, what have you got to lose? Righto, team, that almost wraps up another episode of the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Hope you enjoyed it. There's plenty of marketing gold coming your way in the weeks ahead, including a chat with the founder of the Ugg Boot brand. Pretty cool. Plus, we catch up with an amazing salesperson, Nicholas Lynch, who takes us through the five key things we need to nail selling. And I've got to tell you, the five things are not what you think. It's not like get your script right. No, none of that. Hey, have you listened to the chat I had with Glenn Azar? from the adventure professionals, this guy who's come back from the brink of bankruptcy, climbed Everest and walked the Kokoda Trail more times than I care to think about is truly amazing and he's now running a business he loves. I coach a lot of individuals and small business people around uh, fulfilling themselves because you go into small business for a reason and the thing that holds most people back in small business and myself included in the early days is fear, is I'm not good enough, is I don't want to put myself out there and yet for people my age, so I'm nearly 45, there's kids out there in their early 20s who are murdering us online because they're fast adapters, they're willing to put themselves out there and then people our age are going, how dare they put themselves out there like that? Well, you know what, that's what you should be doing. Mm. You should have the guts to put yourself out there and say, hey, I'm really good at what I do. Oh boy, that was one inspiring interview. Absolutely loved it. In fact, in order to, I didn't know how to end it. I actually just got up and hugged him. <laughs> Love it. You'll find that full interview plus hundreds more over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com or you can subscribe free on your favourite podcast catcher, which I would love you to do. Hey, I'd also love to hear from you. Email me, tim at timreid, reid.com.au or hit me up on Twitter at Timbo Reid. Now, be sure to grab your free seat at Dale Beaumont's 52 Ways events that will be touring Australia and New Zealand in May, June and August this year. Head over to 52ways.biz and grab your seat now as they are limited and they are filling up fast, as you'll see when you go to the website. And check out Fastmail, private, secure, ad-free email hosting that is absolutely lightning fast. You can grab a free 30-day trial plus get an exclusive listener 15% off over at fastmail.com forward slash Timbo with packages starting from just under four bucks a month. It's kind of a no-brainer. Hey, if you love the small business big marketing show, why wouldn't you? Then let another business owner know or two, grab their phone, open up a podcast app and download the show for them. Go on. If all of you did just that once to someone, that'd be unreal. (laughs) Until next week, I'm Timbo Reid. Always have been, always will be. Thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now. (laughs) 